All right, well, after beating our heads against the wall for a long, long time with this distributor, the ready to run distributor, which is very much not ready to run, we've been informed it actually does require a 6AL box in order to run, which is not what we want to do. So we've decided to scrap that one and go to something all new and improved. We reached out to our friends at Aces and they sent us a brand new Aces Blackjack unit. Now, the other nice thing is this thing can actually be controlled by that ECU that we already have in the car. So this way we're gonna be running the ACES Command Center, ACES EF5 fuel injection system, and the ACES uh, ignition system. We've already got ACES wires on it, so let's just make it all ACES right there. Uh, we do need to set it up for locked out as well. Uh, does, you don't want any of the mechanical advance or anything going on in it, and it doesn't have vacuum advance on it. So um, we gotta make sure the engine's in time and get that all set, and then we're gonna take this thing apart, put it back together again, and hopefully that <laughs> fixes our problem. We'll be back in business, hopefully. All right, so it's easier to see with the camera than it is with my naked eye. I've got my 15 degree mark roughly lined up with my zero. So I'll pull the distributor out and lock out my distributor. So we've got our, call it, our thrust washer. This is a sealed bearing unit, which is nice. Interchangeable body, interchangeable stem. Got a washer there, and probably a sealed bearing right underneath that guy. Yep, so it's got a bearing on top, a bearing on the bottom. Very nice unit. Magnet works. <laughs> so, we're just going to set that guy there because we're not going to play with him for the moment. I need a pair of uh, you know, those pliers. But we're going to take inner shaft out, rotate it 180 degrees so that it fits into this uh, slot over here for locked out setup. Grab some needle nose pliers and we'll do that real quick. Locking out the centrifugal advance. Remove the advance components, including the springs, weights, and the advance stop bushing from the advance assembly. Remove the roll pin from the drive gear and remove the gear from the shaft. We didn't have a gear, but slide the two slide the shaft two inches out of the housing, rotate the shaft 180 degrees, insert the advance stop bushing. Oh, I probably didn't need to take the distributor part on this one, but it's kind of fun doing it um, because this one doesn't have the distributor shaft that holds it in, but I like seeing what I'm working with too. So it's all right. Take that guy. And these players probably won't do what I need them to do. There is a bushing. Fits in there. Maybe. So 
there's different sized bushings that change the amount of travel that this can change your advance mechanically and a smaller smaller diameter bushing will allow it to give you more mechanical advance we're going to remove this nut and remove this bushing and then put it together in the lockout hole and put the nut back on it and then it will be fixed so that our computer can do all of the timing control without having extra ignition timing going into it that it doesn't want so not a big deal it doesn't take too long to do Put it back together, verify our timing, and then we're going to move this car over to the dyno, which is uh, exciting because I'm also going to go get a Cadillac to put in the bay where that car's been. We're going to pull the engine out of that. Uh, minor customization, nothing made, nothing made. It'll be fun. It'll make great noises. Okay. Oh, it looks like it just switches over. So you're moving it from this position where it has movement, taking it 180 degrees, putting it there where it's got, it's got a little bit of movement, but I think once the nut is on there, probably lock it down right proper. Take our seven millimeter locker down. Perfect. Now she's one, one with the primary shaft. Let me go back together. So we got our washer, our pairing. Our other bearing. This thing rolls so nice. So nice. Thrust washer. And our collet. And my hammer is out there on the bench. So I'll drive that back through. This guy only goes on one way. Drop it back in the car.
It's alive! It has moved under its own power in quite a few months. And there you go, boys. We are making some serious progress. The CUDA is once again driving. Now, at this point in time, we do need to do some tuning on the ECU itself. It is a self-learning system, so more or less what you need to do is you need to make sure your parameters are correct in the handheld, you need to get the engine up to operating temperature, and then you need to basically just drive it around a bit. Um, in our case, unfortunately, it's winter time here in Ohio, and although it's not currently snowing, there is a ton of salt on our roads, so we're probably not going to do that with this car. We're probably not going to drive this thing in the salt. If it does rain here in the next couple of days, maybe we get a chance with the salt washed off the ground uh, to be able to drive it. But we do have a dyno, so that's probably where you're going to see this thing get its break-in miles done, is actually on our uh, dyno jet dyno that's in the back of the shop. So um, we've made some major progress. You cannot understand, well, maybe you do, understand what it is to see this thing finally move under its own power to finally have gotten over all these headaches and finally gotten this thing to where it is um, that ignition system was killing us all emotionally just frustrating to be able to get to that point where you know you've done everything correct you've just got an issue with the parts and you can't figure out exactly what it is because you know you ordered the right thing i ordered the right thing it's just a matter of it wasn't the right thing but all that's resolved. We're back up and running. Thank you very much to the guys at ACES. Thank you guys for all the tech support that you guys have given us uh, over this entire process. Uh, I did manage to fry a handheld when I tried to update the handheld. Uh, so it's gonna have got my seven inch one out of my AMC in it at the moment. Uh, but we'll figure that out and uh, move forward with things as it, as it goes. But the next thing you see with this CUDA is it's gonna be on our dyno um, here in the next couple coming of days, or possibly if the roads get cleaned off some uh, actual highway mileage to be able to get this thing driving. Now, as Rich alluded to also, this is something you're going to see in the very, very near future. That is a very big bad black Coupe de Ville Cadillac. And this thing needs to be meaner. She's like a 13,000 mile, basically all original museum piece of a Cadillac that's next life is going to be a whole lot rowdier than the first part of its life. So that's gonna be coming up in a new build coming soon. Uh, we are not quite done with that Cuda. You'll see it at least one more time, but we appreciate you guys tuning in for all of the adventures here at Lucor Automotive, uh, showing all your support for us and everything we do here. We are just a small shop here in Central Ohio that works on a lot of cool cars. Uh, we also work on a whole lot of daily drivers and that kind of stuff. So if you enjoy this kind of thing, click on the subscribe button. We always do appreciate you. Thank you for being here. We truly do appreciate it. That's us. We hope to see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.